Hi everybody, and welcome to The Psych Files. Michael Britt here, and this is episode 169 on the topic of validity. Alright, so let's dive in. This is actually uh, kind of a part two to uh, episode 169. We're talking about testing, uh, psychological testing, about everybody in addition to knowing about Freud, uh, at least the name, they know about uh, the Rorschach test, right? That is one test that tells you a little bit about your personality. But an interesting and kind of fun article was recently published by uh, Dr. Marianne Miserandino from Arcadia University. It has a very fun title, Ice Cream, You Scream, Teaching Validity and Rel Reliability via the Ice Cream Personality Test. There are tests all over the web which claim to be able to tell you about your personality. Validity, let's go to that. What, what do we mean by that? And the, the question is, once you get outside the test, does it seem to, to agree with some other tests or does it agree with what would happen to you in life? Is it truthful what the test claims to reveal? So apparently, if I like chocolate, all I have to do is click on that. I find out that uh, I am lively, creative, dramatic, charming, enthusiastic, the life of the party. Now, here's the interesting thing. Suppose I had chosen another one. One of the points that Dr. Miserandino makes in her article, she gave this to students and asked them to go around and give this to other students that they knew to see if this test seemed to predict what they knew about their friends. So they did this test, they gave it to them, and they made predictions beforehand as to which personality their friend had, and then checked that against whether or not the friend picked the kind of ice cream this test would suggest that personality type likes, <laughs> okay? And, uh, well, what they found, and I can show you the, not surprisingly, uh, that there was no relationship there. It's non-significant results. They were all over the place. The test doesn't have any validity. All right, so it, it didn't predict. The point that she makes is this is what they call the Barnum effect. They're just too broad, these descriptions of personality. We believe that there's something here because we have a tendency to look only for things that agree with what we already believe. So, okay, you knew that test was kind of for fun. So let's take a look at this one the distorted tunes test, and then we'll take a look at the achievement test. So, this is the test. Again, I may, let me play another one here. What you have to do, you're given this test, is you have to listen to these melodies and decide whether or not the tune is played correctly. All right, so let's listen to another melody. Hmm, I think there was a wrong note in there. Okay, so I would say that that one was played incorrectly, so I would answer no on that. And we'll just... one. More. Ooh. Oh, that's wrong. I think that's swing low, right? <laughs> so you would probably recognize these tunes if, if you, you know, played an instrument or took music classes and that kind of thing. So this will tell you whether or not you have sort of, you know, a, a good ear for things. And... Uh, because if you can't tell that there was a wrong note played, then maybe music is not for you. All right, so it's a pretty reliable test. So I'm going to switch over to a, kind of a fun little program in order to talk about validity. This is called Scribbles. All right. And it uh, just allows me to write on the screen. So I'm going to... This is by 8Bits. <laughs> A-T-E-Bits.com. I'll have a link to it. It's kind of, a, as I say, kind of a fun little program. So... Validity. Now I'm going to just write on the top here. Oops, I got to. I have it in uh, eraser mode. So you can choose different uh, pens here. I'm going to. Now this that's kind of good because if you have really bad uh, valid -i -t handwriting like I do, it sort of makes it not as bad as it could be. So let's take a look at. Um, well, the, the, one of the first ones, uh, maybe one of the easiest kinds of validity, is called face validity. All right, kind of an easy one to understand. Does the test, on the face of it, appear to test what it is testing? All right. So, if you were to uh, well, let me get back here. Whoa, I got back there. Okay. If you were asked to take this test to listen to tunes and indicate whether or not it was played correctly or not, 
After a while, and there's uh, 26 questions, after a while, even if no one told you what the test was about, you'd figure it out. Right? You would say, oh, well, this is obviously testing whether or not I have a good ear. Right? So this test has high face validity. There's nothing tricky here. There's nothing, you know, subtle about this. Now, if I asked you, what's your favorite ice cream? You would tell me because you thought I was interested in that. Maybe you were going to go buy me an ice cream. But you would not know that I might be testing your personality. Okay, so this has low face validity. Now, whether high or low uh, face validity is good or not really kind of depends. For example, if you were taking the Rorschach, the one that we're familiar with, that has low face validity. That is, you really don't know exactly what the psychologist is looking for. So if you say there's a butterfly in there, you don't know uh, exactly if that's... What does that mean about you? You don't know. Unlike the distorted tunes test, you can't quite tell what's going on. And the other test, called the thematic apperception test, um, I ask you to tell a story about what you see in this picture. Again, you don't know what it is exactly I might be looking for. You might know that it has something to do with your personality, but you you don't know what you're revealing when you answer a question. Now, and again, that's not bad. Uh, in fact, that's good because sometimes you don't want to ask people directly about their personalities because they won't tell you the truth of what we call the social desirability effect. They want to appear to be a certain kind of person. Here's the test on achievement. Okay, here are the questions. If you can feel confident that people are answering questions truthfully, then you might go for something like this, in which people know what you're looking for, but they're going to give you truthful answers. If you score highly on the distorted tunes test, then what should you uh, be like? How should you do in life? Well, uh, let's say you uh, we find out some other information about you. Do you play an instrument? All right. So instrument... I'll put a question mark there. Instrument. So, well, if we were to take the, give this test, let's say, the tunes test, to uh, 100 people, then the ones who scored highly should probably uh, play some kind of instrument, right? More of them. So let's say 80% uh, of them play an instrument, whereas the low scorers, uh, maybe 0% or 10% play an instrument. I mean, if you can't really tell one tune from another, you're probably not attracted to playing musical instruments. Concurrent validity. Concurrent. So, the test should tell me something about your life right now. It should agree with some things in your life. All right. Um, so, do you play an instrument? Now, suppose that you give this test out to a bunch of kids in a middle school, and they're all forced to play instruments. Well, then, uh, whether or not they play it is not a good measure anymore. But you could look at, since they're all forced to play instruments, look at their grades. Oops. Grade. All right. um, those who score highly in the tunes test should have better grades than those who don't score so well. Okay, um, The tunes test should agree then concurrently, in other words, with whatever's going on in the person's life. All right. As opposed to, can it predict anything? In other words, uh, if right now playing an instrument Maybe you aren't playing one, but will you play one in the future? So what we do with predictive validity, again, we could look at the same thing, whether or not you play an instrument. Okay, instrument. But we have to wait. And so we give the test out to 100 people, as many people as we can, 500 people, and then we follow them into the future, uh, maybe five years later, to see if any of them are playing instruments. We could look at their career. Do any of them become musicians? It is about confidence. Am I confident that the test actually measures what it says it's going to measure? Convergent. V-E-R. Right. And divergent. Validity. 
okay, which are uh, somewhat similar to what I just said, convergent. So this test, this distorted tunes, this should converge. It should agree with other tests. So suppose there's an, another test out there, there's got to be, that's similar in some way, right? It's the, uh, the tin-ear test. I don't know, you know. <laughs> uh, uh, so if you, uh, tin, there we go. If you get a high score on my test, you should get a high score on their test. The correlation, oh, there's those statistics, might be uh, 0.7 here, right? I mean, it's kind of a high uh, correlation there, convergent. Maybe someone has made another kind of test on the ear, differences in sound test, the differences, the DIS, all right? And uh, maybe they use an entirely different approach, and that would be really good if, if they didn't have me listen to music, but they had me listen, let's say, to those little, you know, those little forks that have sound to them. You ting, you know, you ting the, the fork, and uh, th it should agree. Maybe it correlates 0.6. All right, and if they do, as I predict they will, then I have uh, confidence again. Now it should diverge with tests that have either absolutely nothing to do with tunes. So maybe I give them like an extra version test. Is there any reason why people uh, extroversion with good sense of tune should be extroverted? Nothing that I can think of. So the correlation might be zero here. Okay, so it, it hasn't have anything to do with that. So here we go. An achievement test. Boom. ACH is often. It's often. So concurrent. If I were to give this out, let's say I was just developing it, I give it out to a whole bunch of people. What should the, what, if I want to establish the validity of it, what should people with high in achievement be doing? They should have, maybe they make more money, right, than people low in achievement. So I'll correlate it with that. Hopefully I get something maybe, you know, something high like 0.8. They should maybe have high positions in their organization. So I will look at their, uh, what, you know, are you at the bottom of the hierarchy, the ladder, or are you near the top? And you would think, so I'll go with point nine. you would think I should have a high spot in the organization, right? So that's concurrent. Is it predictive? Again, I'd have to give it to kids, let's say in high school. And then I follow them, and I could measure those same things. Do they, 10 years later, do they make more money than people who score low in achievement? All right, concurrent and predictive. Convergent means I should be able to give this test uh, to uh, people and give them another test, maybe at the same time. Are achieving high achievers also extroverted? Well, you might say, oh, maybe a little bit. Okay. So give me a little room there. Give me a 0.5 correlation because introverted people can be uh, achievers as well. But still, there should be some um, agreement between an extroversion test and an achievement test. They converge on the same similar or related idea. All right? As, as opposed to diverge. So, for example... Uh, an achievement test might correlate negatively. Well, we could even go with an introversion test, right? So it should go the opposite way now. It should be maybe negative 0.5 because those two uh, ideas are somewhat opposed to each other because probably achievers are, are outgoing, you know? So again, you wind up with this correlation matrix which tells you that if they all follow the right pattern, then you've got yourself a good test. All right, so that's the idea of validity. It's looking outside the test in order to give yourself an idea of whether or not that test really does agree with real life. Okay, there you go. That's uh, validity, folks. Hope you found this interesting. And do check out my apps in the App Store if you're studying for a psychology test. There's Psych Test Hero for the tablets and Psych Hero for Android and OI, o, iOS smartphones. And if you're just interested in psychology, there's Psych Explorer right now for iOS devices. Okay, see you next time on the Psych Files. Take care.